today we're going to look at combinations. Now last time we looked at permutations and with permutations it was very important that order mattered. The big difference now is with combinations order doesn't matter. And that is a big, well, the major difference between the two of them. Doesn't matter. So as a simple example, uh, suppose you had a, a group of 20 people and you were going to pick five people and treat them to lunch. You're going to go get a pizza with all the trimmings, maybe two or three. If you were going to do that, it wouldn't matter what order you pick the five people in. You know, it wouldn't matter if you said Fred, Bill, and Joe, and Sally, and Lindsay. It wouldn't matter if I said Lindsay, Joe, Sally, Fred, and whoever else. The, the point being that that would be a combination. Order doesn't matter. They're all going to get that pizza lunch. So that's the big thing here. Um, to help you understand uh, where we're going to develop a formula for this, I'm going to look at uh, permutations again and kind of build a formula from what we already know. So in this case, I'm going to look at um, our favorite, the letters again. So we're going to take letters A, B, C, D, and E, and we're going to choose three. Okay? Now, if I was going to be working with permutations, I'm going to say order matters for a moment, then uh, what I'd be doing would be five unique items, and I'm going to pick three. Okay, now in this case, order is mattering. So um, what would we get if we worked that out? Well, we'd have uh, five factorial all over five minus three factorial. And um, if I wanted to, I could just simplify that a little bit. 5 factorial over 2 factorial. And I'm just going to leave that for a moment. Now, since order matters, um, let me just list some of these permutations. Like, suppose the three that I happen to be looking at that got selected were the A, the B, and the C. Well, some of our answers okay, are going to look like this. One permutation would be A, B, C. Another permutation is going to be A, C, B, because order is important here. It's a permutation. Another one would be B, A, C, or B, C, A. And another uh, permutation here is C, A, B, and the last one that uses these three letters, C, B, A. So I have six different permutations. But if order doesn't matter, if I was to say, oh, let's just choose three and order doesn't count, then all of these are really saying the same thing. They all use an A, a B, and a C. And if order doesn't matter, this shouldn't count as six. It should count as one. Okay, because it's the same three in each grouping. So what we have here, in a manner of speaking, is if we're talking permutations, we've got six times too many. Okay, so what do I do if I want to change this and make it combinations if I have six times too many? To undo that, I'm going to divide by six. So um, let me just make a little room here and show you how we're going to fix this right up. Okay. Now we had this as our permutations, okay, and even if I, I kept it in this form here, there was our permutations. Now, I just said, well, if we looked at the ABC example, to fix it, we're going to divide by 6. So I'm just going to put a 6 next to it here. Now, funny thing about the number 6, um, it happens to be... 3 factorial. Uh, is that a coincidence? Uh, not really. Uh, if you think about it, A, B, C, we were looking at all the different permutations of those three letters, and there happens to be six permutations. 
Well, that's like saying those three unique things, factorial, is how many different permutations there are of those three letters. So it's no coincidence that it's three factorial, which is the same thing as those six permutations. So there's kind of our formula for this specific example. And by the way, here's how we would write this. We would write it as five total items, choose three. Okay, this is what that means. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to generalize that and have a little look at what the formula would look like using N and R. So, here's the guys where order doesn't matter, N choose R. And so that's going to be N factorial divided by n minus r factorial, and then an r factorial. This is sort of following this guideline down here with these numbers. So there's our formula. And these are the order doesn't count. That's what these guys are. Okay. Um, now, let's see if we can uh, look at an example here. And a really good example that comes to mind with combinations, something that you might have experienced already. Perhaps you're a winner, perhaps you played uh, or bought a ticket, or you're somebody you know bought a ticket for the very famous 649 lottery. Now, if you don't know about this little game, the way it works is you have 49 numbers all together and you're asked to pick six. So you pick six numbers and the order doesn't actually matter. Okay, You're going to pick six numbers out of those 49. And of course, the big winner is the person who picks the same six numbers as that are drawn later that week. So that's how you win in this lottery. Well, how many um, different ways are there for... Um, combinations of choosing six numbers if you have 49 to choose from. So if order doesn't matter, and that's every time you do a problem like this, you got to stop and start with, stop and start. You got to think to yourself, does order matter or doesn't it? And in the 649 lottery, order doesn't matter. Keep stressing that. I guess I should write order. Okay, so what are we going to do? So we know it's combinations. There's 49 things to choose from. We're choosing six. Well, there it is. Pretty simple. Um, now we just go ahead and work that out. Now, of course, we can go to the formula. We can put 49 factorial all over 49 take away 6 is 43 factorial and then times that by 6 factorial. And you can do a lot to simplify this yourself. For example, and I'm just going to reach a point where I'm going to then show you a different way to do it. But uh, The 43 factorial cancels with 43 factorial on the top. So on the top, you got your 48, sorry, your 49 times your 48 times your 47 times your 46 times your 45 times your 44. And the 43 on the bottom factorial cancels with everything that's left on the top. And that's over 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which I won't write. And then you could do a little simplifying here, and then you could ultimately put it in the calculator and get your answer. Well, it's one little problem with that is uh, well, it's still a lot of work. Now, you got to know your formula, but there is built into the calculator, just like with permutations, a pretty snazzy, fast way to do it. So let's just get this out of here, show you what it would look like on the, um, in this case, the Texas Instruments uh, 83 calculator. You'd start by typing in the 49. Then you'd go and hit the math button. Okay. And then you'd go over to PRB. Now, let me grab my calculator. And uh, we'll work this out while we're at the, uh, the same time. So 49, and I press math, 
And then I'm just going to arrow one over to the left, so I'm at PRB. And there's NCR. And so I choose that, and then I want to put in 6. So now it's all typed in. I've got to put down here that... Um, uh, hold on. This was number 3 that you choose, followed by a 6. Okay. And then you hit Enter. And here's your answer. You've done pretty snazzy and quick on the calculator. And boy, it's a lot of choices. Looks like 13,983,816. Holy smokes. Almost 14 million combinations of six numbers out of 49. Not so easy to get a winning ticket is the conclusion I make looking at that. Okay, let's look at one more example. And uh, I think we'll go back to the idea of uh, taking a group, say, for a uh, pizza lunch or something like that. Let's have a look here. Get a little bit of board space going here. And then we'll have a little look. All right. I think in this example, we're going to take a choice of 30 students. Okay, and we're going to choose five. Okay, order doesn't matter. So I know I'm dealing with combinations here. So in order to see how many different combinations there are, pretty simple, 30, choose any five, let's see how many we get there. So this is going to be, uh, let's put uh, what it is underneath, total combinations. Now there's a method to my madness as to why I'm writing down exactly what this represents, because I'm going to be building a different question based on the same uh, situation. So let's get our number here, 30, Math, PRB, choose number 3, and then we put in the 5 and hit Enter. So here's what we get, total ways of getting, um, picking 5 students out of 30. We have 142,506. Holy smokes. Now suppose you thought to yourself, uh, you're sitting there, your name's Tim, and you're thinking, boy, it'd be good if Joe and I got picked. Okay, So you want to know how many groupings are there if we're talking Tim and Joe are in those groupings. Okay, So as a kind of second question here, we're asking how many groupings or combinations include... Tim and Joe. So you really wanted to know, especially if you were Tim, I wonder how many groupings that is. Well, here's what you got to be thinking. Um, Tim and Joe, in this scenario, they're in the group already. So they're not really up for grabs, so to speak. Uh, they're supposedly, in this scenario, they've been picked. Tim and Joe picked. So what we're looking at is how many arrangements are there for the other three students who will get picked. In other words, from the remaining 28 students, how many combinations are there to pick three? So that's what you're looking at. This equals the total number of arrangements with Tim and Joe. Because Tim and Joe, they're in it, and now how many other ways are there to pick the remaining three. So 28, math, PRB, number three, and we put in three, and there it is. Uh, not very many arrangements that include Tim and Joe compared to the uh, total that uh, arrangements that are out there. And then what if we had one more question here? Just to show you a little twist here. 
Poor Tim and Joe are thinking, well, that's not very many. So now we're going to ask how many combinations don't include Tim and Joe. Oh, goodness. So they're thinking, how many don't include Tim and Joe? And this is actually a very easy question to answer because we're not going to do any fancy statistical stuff. We're going to say this is the total number of combinations, 142,506. And then we're going to subtract from it however many combinations do have Tim and Joe in it. And so whatever that uh, the difference between them is, that's how many don't have Tim and Joe. So here we go, 142,506 minus 3276. And so this is how many combinations don't have Tim and Joe. Now just to make this really clear, um, when we say they don't include Tim and Joe, uh, there are many combinations that include Tim and four other people, but not Joe. Okay, those would be amongst these here. Okay, where Tim gets picked, but his friend doesn't. And there's lots of combinations where Joe has been picked and not Tim. But this number here, this is how many combinations don't have Tim and Joe. So it's five people, none of which are Tim or Joe. There are, sorry, Tim and Joe. So it's five people. Tim and Joe are, are not together. So that's kind of like what this is saying. This is how many different groupings where Tim and Joe can't have a lunch together. So that's our little look at uh, combinations. And uh, it's an interesting field. can get very complicated, but it's a lot of fun too. So we'll catch you later.